Hello everybody, my name is Hadar Shimshon and I'm a second year student majoring in environmental health. Today I'll be talking about Dr. Stanley B. Pirschner, the scientist that discovered the prions, a misfolded protein that causes fatal neurological diseases such as Kuro, Mad Cow Disease, and Kirschfeld's Jacobs Disease. Pirschner was born in 1942 in the Midwest to a middle class European Jewish family. His mother was a high school math teacher and his father was an architect who was drafted to the Navy during World War II. During his childhood, Stanley moved several times because of his dad's military position, but had a fairly normal childhood for those days. Besides studying Latin for five years, which helped him in his research in the future, Stanley didn't really enjoy school. Stanley began college at Penn State University, majoring in chemistry. He said that because of the small-sized undergraduate body, he could make important connections with his professors. He was involved in a medical project, which made him consider studying medicine in the future. Prishner was accepted to medical school at Penn State. After graduating medical school, Prishner was offered a research job for the Public Health Service during the Vietnam War. He says that he learned valuable research skills during that period. Three years later, Prishner was offered a residency in neurology at the University of California. In 1972, he will admit his first patient with a neurological disorder which was associated with the slow virus. The mysterious virus was infecting both animals and humans. This is a picture of a child with Kur disease, a fatal disease which is related to tribal funeral customs which involve brain consumption. This is a man with Kuishfeld's Jacobs disease another fatal neurological disease. Krishner did not accept the slow virus definition, and in 1974, he set up his own lab. Little did Stanley know, he was starting a journey of more than 20 years until a prion theory would be officially accepted. Throughout the entire process, Krishner collaborated with many other scientists in the field. In 1982, Krishner publishes his groundbreaking paper on the infectious proteinaceous disease he coined prions. The goal of the experiment was to isolate the infectious agent and determine its structure. The first step was infecting Syrian golden hamsters with the Scarpi agent and removing their brain after 65 days of infection. The second step involved slicing the brains into 10 by 10 centimeter plates treating them with several compounds such as glutamine, insulin, and penicillin, and placing them in a 37 degrees Celsius incubator. After the first incubation period, different cell cultures replicated at different rates. This information was used to assign different treatments. Overall, 13 lines were treated and cultured. The next step was to visualize the different Scarpi agent proteins using SDS page. SDS page uses an electrical current to separate protein by molecular weight. Here we see the different proteins from the experiments. A preferred culture line was chosen and left to further divide for a whole year. After a year, the culture was sampled and observed by immunofluorescent detection. This technique is used for staining specific parts of specimens using antibodies that bind to the observed structure. However, intense exposure of the samples to UV light causes photo bleaching and blurry results, as we can see here. Confocal microscopy is a better option since it creates a clearer picture. Light from only one focal plane is focused on the camera. The infectious structure was finally identified. It was identified as a misfolded protein. The protein was isolated and was named PRP. The prion proteins are abundantly present in the brain, but their function was not fully known. Once they are misfolded, they cause the misfolding of nearby proteins in the brain, making them very infectious as well. The scientific community did not accept the prion theory. The idea that an amino acid and not an nucleic acid could cause such harmful effects contradicted the central dogma of science. After more than 15 years of intense analysis, most of the scientific community finally accepted it. And in 1997, Prishner won the Nobel Prize. Diagnosing and treating debilitating and deadly neurological diseases was now possible. In his speech in 1997, he said, the most rewarding aspect of my work has been the numerous wonderful friends that I've made during an extensive series of collaborative studies. Dedication and patience could lead to wonderful results. Thank you very much for listening.